Well, boys, welcome back to Tennessee Titans franchise, and today is actually going to be a very loaded episode, and especially in the beginning here. Sure, you can just go skip straight to the gameplay, but here we are going over a lot of things. If you guys don't remember what we did last episode, we put DeAndre Hopkins on the trade block. We got so furious at the game, and now it leads to five or six different decisions I have made headed into just week five of the season. Let's check out what I did on the team, and, uh, and we have a breakout wide receiver and just a bunch of stuff. Also, ignore the biggest pimple you'll ever see. And then my, like, lip over here is a little, little messed up. So, hopefully you guys can ignore that. I was thinking about turning the face cam off. And I was like, nah, I'm good with it. But I just don't know if other people would be. Just to keep your guys' attention here, we'll look at the offers from DeAndre Hopkins' trade block. And I tell you what, there's, like, three different trades in here I want to accept and <laughs> use. One of them being this one. I just love Tank Dell as a player, but I just don't think this is fair compensation. So, this one is the first one I would actually consider this is byron murphy a 26 year old boundary corner stereotypical size and then we get a this year third round pick along with it along with another seventh to get a potential udfa or something along those lines and then another one i'd consider taking is jonathan allen sure he's 29 he doesn't have a whole lot left in him but a 93 superstar x factor player plus a two years so we have this year and then next year we have a next year third round pick and a this year seventh involved in it as well jonathan allen this is a very very, very, very compelling trade. I would love to do this. And DeAndre Hopkins, something else to mention about him. This is his last year on the deal. He is up for an extension and I'm probably not going to extend him. He's 32, not worth the money. We'd probably be then paying him. And it depends on how long he wants to be here, if he has interest coming back. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. So it's easier to just send him off for Jonathan Allen and then also Josh Uche, a 25-year-old edge rusher. But I thought, well, it's only a six and a seventh and I'm not really looking for an edge rusher. We have Rashad. Sean Montag, the first round pick, the eighth overall pick in this last draft. And we also have Harold Landry already on the team. And they're both looking in better positions than that. So I'd improve with Jonathan Allen. I think that that would be like the best trade. And then Byron Murphy to get a solid boundary corner. That's only 26 and a third rounder this year wouldn't be horrible. Jalen Johnson, same thing. I wouldn't mind this. And plus we get two picks here, fourth and a fifth in this upcoming draft. And then a seventh next year. And then Tank Dell, like I mentioned, just one of my favorite players right now. Like um, I, he was my second highest grade receiver coming out of this uh this last draft class and he's showing and proving me right in real life so far but byron murphy definitely on the table jonathan allen definitely on the table and not much else really piques my interest next thing is breakout wide receiver of course we won't be able to see who's talking but coach last week was awesome back in high school and college a lot of teams uh used me as primarily a, a blocker but i've always considered myself a receiving threat i'm guessing this is chica conquo it is he needs three receiving uh touchdowns or 150 plus receiving yards got close last week it looks like it's gonna be raining for the entire game this week and probably won't take long for the conditions to get pretty sloppy what's our plan on offense probably should pass the ball considering we have a superstar development on the line with chica conquo but we'll look to we'll look to run the ball pretty comfortable with that and uh, we'll try to get 150 plus running yards if you guys know us it's probably not gonna be too difficult also one thing to mention here is the downs played and then you look at this right here the sacks allowed Andrew Dillard, who went out last week, and we saw no sacks allowed from that left tackle, Jalen Duncan, who will be in place starting for uh, Andrew Dillard because he's just, or Andre Dillard, he's just been too bad and Jalen Duncan will come in and he will play starting left tackle. If that doesn't work out, I would not be scared to move to Yosh Nijman for that uh, left tackle spot. But for now, Jalen Duncan will get his shot. And then not too much movement here with uh, players ready to negotiate. I'm not really ready for anything yet. Scouting college players, we barely know anything about anyone. And so I'll just head into weekly strategy and let you guys know how I do in those training drills. CJ Stroud will actually be someone to uh, talk about here as he has superstar development. Uh, that doesn't fare well for us. Barely get gold here with um, Jalen Reynolds in Russia attack and an easy goal here for Rashawn Montag in trench battle as well Ooh, we do have upgrades available one for Jalen Reynolds and one for Rashawn Montag as well but Jalen Reynolds we've been focusing on him being a better receiving back at this point because he needs to be like that was his uh you know intended role but now I have to announce something he's the starter and I was going to show that to you guys earlier but I'm just gonna play into this upgrade right here so he will be the starter he'll be up to a 77 overall already and 
and uh, he's been good so far. And Rashawn Montag, he struggles definitely in the uh, finesse department, so I'm not really looking to get him all that much better there, as we'll just upgrade Run Stopper, and hopefully his block shedding can go up. It goes up only one to a 79. His power moves at 80. He's been good and uh, getting into the backfield and everything like that. Alex Woodbury, our I believe seventh or sixth round pick with um, you know incredible upside <laughs> and uh, probably will never see legit playing time. We'll be up to a 71 overall. The 6'3 kid out of what was it? I was gonna say LSU, but it's Ole Miss, 21 years old, very sculptable here. Like I mentioned, 6'3, 207, 94 excel, 93 speed, 85 jumping. He's got like I said a lot of upside. So this week the lineup will look a lot different with Jalen Reynolds at starting running back, Jalen Duncan at starting left tackle, Brunskill will come in and play for Matt Hennessy, who has played like dog shit. And then um, defensively, we're going to get Aziz Alshair, Joseph Klein a lot more involved, as I realize that Alshair really doesn't play a role at all. With injuries, Isaiah Bugs will be forced to, um, you know, be signed onto the team, and we might just release him here soon. But with Tim Settle and both Tier Tart, um, I put Tim Settle on IR, and then Tier Tart out for the next three weeks. We're going to have Isaiah Bugs fill in as we signed him out of free agency the end, end of last episode. Rashawn Montag steps up into the starting left end spot and then here's the corner room let's head into the game and have some fun here we are in the dumping pissing down rain uh player showcase who are we gonna highlight here who do you think it is it's jordan brooks the new texan and i think this is already our second time against them this season and here we are into the game and you guys see it it's blue versus red today and i already hate that we have to uh to run this okay never mind jalen reynolds out to the edge doing his best on his first carry making the first First carry as a starter out there going for 20 yards. What a way to start the game and he'll be off and going again. He's up the field. Looks like we might have this one come back, but that is another huge explosive rush and votes so well towards the future of this game. This one is probably going to be a holding on the offense. It's Clyde Claxton. Someone that's seeing not limited play time, but not as much play time, probably even as much as Kyle Phillips as we see him on the field now. And it's unfortunate, but but definitely well warranted. Um, Clyde, Clyde Claxton, when he's been in, hasn't been the best separator, and that's really what we're looking for on the opposite side of um, DeAndre Hopkins, and he's just not ready yet. And honestly, DeAndre Hopkins might be gone soon, so he might not have to worry about that. Might have one of the uh, the worst rush or uh, passing and wide receiving attacks in the league after that. But in the meantime, we will absolutely be carving up the, okay, I, I lied, but we have been carving up this Texans defense to start off. We'll be forced to pass here on this first one. Give me DeAndre Hopkins in the rain. I trust his hands probably the most by far and it's it's not close as we'll try to get him here again and we'll just take it down I'm scared i'm always scared to throw those because they always somehow turn into interceptions ty j our former starting running back will work up the middle of the field for just five and due to no surprise we'll just get this one to reynolds who will try to fight up the middle for a little extra yards as he's starting to slow down just a tad and this is a pretty bare line to try and run against so we will and just get three i think on that maybe even just two just good enough for the touch or for the uh the first down as we'll focus on the touchdown now as Reynolds continues in the backfield. We won't see anybody switching out for, for nothing yet as we have someone off the edge. We can't let that one be a sack. Malik Willis lets this one fly. Second and goal now. We will try to run the ball. Peter Skronsky does a good job making that block up to that second level on Jordan Brooks and it's Reynolds in for his second touchdown of the season. Jalen Reynolds. What a drive and what a way to start. We have 14 miles per hour of wind against us right now. Addison Reed kicking in some <laughs> crazy conditions. That one almost didn't make it. DJ Stroud working his way on out to the wet ass field right now. The all red Texans uniforms. He'll be starting the season off superb. Uh, 72 of 119, 80, 843 yards. And I think he had like four touchdowns and four interceptions. So that could obviously be cleaned up and a little bit better. But this team loves to pass the ball, even when it probably doesn't make sense. So, I mean, they'll probably run it here. But other than that, then it, they might have an issue. But it's Kevin Byard taking a false angle 
We're trying to catch up to Damian Pierce, but he goes for 28 on his first carry. And this one goes out to the right side where Levante David will be to bottle this one up after just three. And this one off now, and the running back will be left wide open thanks to me. Except there'll be a flag, and I'm not sure what this could possibly be on other than roughing the passer. Is it going to be, who is it? Who is it? Don't show me Rashawn Montag. I'm going to be mad. It is Harold Landry who will give the opposing team uh, a reason to get motivated, stay motivated and uh, just play good football. And that is the last thing we needed from them right now. Secure tackler in the backfield. It's Levante David of TFL. Second and 11, we've seen a lot of runs here from this Texans team. It's starting to get a little easy for us to read. It'll be third and 11. They might have to drop back to pass for the first time today. We've got to make sure we can't let any anybody really slip through the cracks or really make their way free in these zones as we'll just try to play the middle of the field the best we can. This one's going to get rolled out into a sack straight into Harold Landry, his second straight week with a sack. And this will almost definitely take them out of field goal range. Uh, I don't know why we're in this sort of coverage here, but I'll take it. This one from Graham Gano will possibly be missed. I would assume so. These conditions are brutal. Had the leg, though. And this one right back to Jalen Reynolds due to no one's surprise. Couldn't shift it to the left or else we would have probably had a bigger gain. Um, not definitely. Or not uh, probably. We definitely would have had a bigger gain. But unfortunately, didn't really come to fruition. As Chigakonkwo's game is pretty much uh, just scuffed from here on out. As we'll try to get this one out to Kyle Phillips, who's done a great job. Um, when he's on the field, he gets open somehow and catches the football and that's all we can ask of our receivers and this will be put us in a very tough position on third and ten to throw in this sort of condition this one is Chigakonkwo it's broken up though I just wish that when I pass lead the football the football would actually get pass led first and ten I don't like not having too many players here in the box as they will actually elect to pass the football downhill huge trying to come in and hit stick but nope it wouldn't register instead engages in some tiny little tackle this one Rashad on Montag in the backfield. Wow, that was really glitchy. It looked like Damian Pierce was like letting him tackle him as he didn't want to move forward or something going on. It was definitely interesting, but we'll take that and uh, just call that a Rashawn Montag great play as I'm going to try to get out to okay you got to be joking Brevin Jordan please don't take this for a touchdown they find the seam beater right through the middle and this one out to Brevin Jordan again no one there in the flat no one really playing underneath we'll start the second quarter um, you know on top in the lead and I like to keep it that way as we are struggling on defense now as Joseph Klein will come in and he'll have a sack thought it was a run already shot the gap and CJ Stroud was just right in front of me joseph klein with his second great game back to back i'm already going to classify this as a great game for some reason i don't know the gears are definitely not turning in my brain right now if you guys couldn't tell i'm going to use joseph klein again this one likely a run this one is a run harold landry's there to stop the damage before it even happens third and 12 cj stroud seems to be pretty good in these sort of situations this one's a screen pass and uh so much for cj stroud being good in these situations i'm sure they'll punt this one what a punt pins us down on the three and today we'll highlight Jalen Reynolds eight rushes 45 yards that's 5.6 a carry and a touchdown only his second ever in the NFL and uh, he'll look to continue that trend as he'll go for 97 yards here no he won't <laughs> he'll be good for four third and one not the game on the line here but Jalen Reynolds does a great job with um high tense and pressure situations going on i guess yeah we're gonna run him into the ground here today as Jalen reynolds will get another carry and it's getting a little too easy for them to read he's already up to 12 rushes ideal amount of carries he'll have to get today just with this sort of weather as i want chickaconquo to like release right away and is that possible can we get chickaconquo we do in space a conquo up the field and he's hurt so uh yeah i don't think we're gonna be getting any challenges done with him today third and one will bring memphis's old antonio gibson into the under the field to stop that one and um yeah that's just the benefit of the cpu knowing the play we ran and jalen duncan actually goes down and that will leave the uh andre dillard to come in and play fourth and inches on their 33 it's a smart thing to punt but can we is there like a qb sneak i can find never mind that we'll just punt be the smart people here and this one will actually be pretty far further than i was expecting First and 10 for the Texans. Chickaconko is officially ruled out with a broken collarbone. 
not good not good at all and uh, like i mentioned i think any chance of his superstar development today is gonna be stopped right there in its tracks as we'll try to get out with joseph klein make a good diving effort at least jalen duncan broken collarbone will not be able to return for this game andrew dillard will see the rest of the play time here we're gonna try to come down and play nope i want to play a little bit press coverage here we'll get D levante david to try to get over but no instead damian pierce turns into the electro slide master this man just go like back and forth no problems at all first and 10 willie gay the free rusher off the edge and brevin jordan seeing a lot of action and uh cj stroud good to get this one off under pressure second and two now we've got a heavy blitz coming in and it's brevin jordan again first and 10 here as we will look to just bottle up this offense and whatever it is they're trying to do this one not thrown accurately it's thrown out of bounds second and 10 like i mentioned second and 10 now we're gonna look to bring a linebacker closer to the line of scrimmage this one might just get open for mike williams shaq griffin out of his league can't do much about it i saw that happen before it even happened and i was gonna be uh very very um try to control someone over there but couldn't watch out first and 10 open field for dylan reed i believe his name is and he'll be marching over our defense he'll be in for the touchdown oh my god give this man the kyle brant angry run award as that was probably the meanest run i've seen all season long all series long by anyone dylan reed into the end zone and i don't like this right here because it's a draw and they know it's a draw so i'm just going to switch to an inside zone that typically does well against this and it does jalen reynolds up the field he'll be good for eight and chuck clark goes down second and two they're bringing the house down they know the plays i'm calling it's so fucking stupid we should have a wide open hole to the left but watch this linebacker he's going to shuffle straight over to the left he started to and then he realized what i he realized i knew he knew reynolds will be under the gun again dillard tries to do a good job to get out there as early as he can he's up another four yards from jalen reynolds sorry it's jalen reynolds as we go play action to him here and not even one person fooled. Can't outrun Will Anderson, now can we? Jesus. I know it's probably stupid right here, but I'm gonna run the football. Third and six, and we'll just look to get up the middle and look at Jalen Reynolds moving forward, going and good for past 90 yards on the day now. And he's been, um, you know, uncalculably great today as he looks to extend up to 107 yards. Jalen Reynolds in just one half of football is up over 100 yards in his first game as the starter. He is showing up and showing out game by game, little by little. He is inching this game forward and single-handedly pro propelling our offense to points. Reynolds breaks loose again as he'll try to run up the middle of the field and he's good for what another 13 it looks like they just can't stop him at the moment he's good for another nine jalen reynolds is steamrolling right now and just showing this defense what's got into him as uh, jordan brooks has a good game uh, attempt or, or not game saving half saving drive saving whatever you want to call it jalen reynolds and he'll shed a block immediately of course i was gonna i was curious when it was gonna end dude we're gonna look to get a little creative here with a tiny little screen pass get it out to jalen reynolds get up big boy Oh, he's up over the end zone. He's up over a couple defenders, too. The number three, Jalen Reynolds, is in for a rushing and receiving touchdown in today's game. Jalen Reynolds is doing it all and showing on full display why he is now our new starting running back. Look, oh, we didn't even show the dive, but Malik Willis is through the roof about it. We are absolutely destroying the ground game right now, especially here on this last drive, and this one's going to be missed. Yep, Addison Reed. Oh boy, I'm 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 butt. I'm like I'm ass. <laughs> Just 44 seconds left here in this um wandering half. As I'm gonna try to use her Levante David in a situation like this, and Mike Williams is good and out of bounds. Just five yards on that one. CJ Stroud, despite the the heavy conditions, has been really good today uh, through the air, and he's uh putting on full display why he has done well as a as a quarterback so far in this league and in real life he actually looks pretty good as um i know i, I kind of hate to be that guy but i saw it coming and we're gonna just try to keep mechie in bounds and that one will keep him in bounds first and 10 stroud gets pressured by rashawn montag sends this one up the field to running back formation now for this uh texans team we're gonna try to take away something and cj stroud tried to do some wizardry shit couldn't complete the ball about 23 seconds and third and 10 ahead of him and try to uh to stop or i guess we're gonna try to stop them from doing anything um remotely insane crazy or anything like that as we'll just basically give them that okay what was that um shaq griffin you 
can't intercept a football with your face mask, buddy. Look at this kick right here. This is so bad. Don't touch it. And yeah, please do. Oh my lord. What is going on right now? We have a legit shot at a freaking, you know, not red zone, obviously, but we have a shot at a field goal here. And we'll look to just, I mean, take nothing and we're going to take ourselves out of it. We get sagged for fit by Rashad Weaver, of all people, a former Titan, if you guys didn't remember. Yep, we'll head to halftime 13 to 7. We are up. 34 offensive snaps for us and 25 rush plays, 144 yards on the ground, 19 yards through the air. We'll head to the halftime report. In Jacksonville, the Jags are tied with the Bills, despite being the opposite record, one and three, there's three and one. ETN has a touchdown in that one. Allen's been uh, efficient, to say the least. And in Pittsburgh, KC will uh, find themselves with a easy matchup going 20 to zero. Steelers four and oh, Chiefs three and one. In theory, the Steelers have been better this season, but not better in that game, 20 to zero is an ass whooping in just one half talk about 20 to 70 that's a that's an ass whooping mac jones 8 of 14 78 yards on a touchdown elliot's getting a chunk of the carries over there jacoby Brissett is the giant or jets quarterback that's nuts and this is really when we tend to struggle the second half and they get a little bit of momentum going their way and then we have like a turnover or something really ridiculous is this one joseph klein in for a second sack oh my lord joseph klein is putting a staple on this defense this one might just be trun tried to run outside roger mccree does a great job getting off his block and making that tackle or at least the effort third and 12 this is like uh i would run it there i wouldn't hesitate or i guess i would really and then mechie gonna be blown up but after the catch which is a good uh good play there this one a pass play and this one headed in number 84 is that tegan quintoriano it is his um you know first reception of the game they're starting to get things going through the air might be a good time to run the, or pass the ball as or run the ball i don't know what i'm doing anymore i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm saying i don't know what i'm controlling or who i'm controlling and this one elijah molden makes a and forces a fumble on just a tight little uh just a little pass to john mechie a little dump down turns into what could have been a very good play for us in our favor but it wasn't unfortunately where's joseph klein's zone it's over here and why is levante's over there and this one gonna be coming across and there's gonna be a flag this one might be coming back roughing the pass it could be anything at this point it is gonna be roughing the tether i'm sure it'll be on harold landry or someone stupid isaiah bugs what a dupe on our first defensive stop in a while we get um a roughing the passer call on someone that we had just signed from free agency to come in and play football for us in this one just be up out of bounds not looking for a dpi we're bringing a heavy blitz in here and this one will be a good idea force him to the left side at least to where amani hooker can capitalize third and 11 will call like a conservative qb call and this one picked no not picked off but uh contested at the catch point headed in odell beckham jr's direction this one will they'll try to make it a three-point game which would uh ultimately make the most sense in a fourth and 11 on the 20 yard line but we do a good job holding up as they just enter the red zone and they will be good for just three when it could have been much worse and they could have converted for seven we'll do a little heavy play action here headed towards the left side this one picked off no wow look at that doing a good job cal van noy just can't move like he used to first and ten we have the goat back out on the field that is going to be jalen reynolds you got to be joking me dude i tried to cut under deandre hopkins just before it was uh too late but at that point really had nowhere else to go so what i've been doing is calling pass plays and then audibling to a run call it douchey call it cheesy whatever you want to uh to make yourself sleep better at night and andre dillard's now down oh boy who's gonna be playing that left tackle spot they're gonna have daniel brunskill go out and play that i'm not letting that fly never mind they actually had jeremiah mcintyre but now it will be it will be yosh nijman the backup right tackle jalen reynolds breaks in tackle moves up the field 25 rushes for 157 yards a touchdown and a receiving touchdown he's been good he's been good to say the least and we will try to make something happen here of course nothing well anderson is just too fast i don't know what's going on here he wasn't really stood stand out as uh as one of the the better athletes in the class but me oh my he showed off today that he can definitely uh run with malik willis's 90 plus speed jalen reynolds gonna work up the middle of the field getting good yardage for what was presented to him in the first place third and eight and this is becoming more of a signature play here the halfback screen will be bottled up there uh, greg Gaines is not that fucking good dude and i mean we have mixed up man coverages all over the field here just to stop any 
anything from happening. This one was wide open. Kevin Byard just lets Mechie through. Don't act like you did something, dumbass. Defenders will come up to play press coverage, as I will uh, not be interested in that, as they can't find anything underneath. It'll be third and ten. And you know what we're going to do. We're bringing the blitz. I'm going to blitz Levante David. Try to get through. You got to be jig. There we go. Out of McCreary, bro. McCreary is the best corner on this team and possibly in the league at this point. Even helping the dude up, and he gets mad at him. Come on, Noah. We'll go back to the MVP. Reynolds will be back out on the field now, and he will be stopped, and we'll try to get him upfield, and Peter Scronsky does a good job propelling us to that point, and they're going to try to crash down on this one. I'll run up right the middle here. Never mind. Wrong read by me, but still gets good yardage and the first down. We'll go hurry up, and then we'll go with a little bit of uh, some PA crossers. I want someone on like a dump down, so just can we put uh, Diaz on a little slant route headed towards that, that middle again? And all day to run for Malik Willis as we'll try to get up past his defense. Couldn't really do much, but eight yards is still good. I think this might be Tajay's first carry of the day. And uh, that's why he doesn't get more, okay? It's his second. And that's why he really doesn't get more. Uh, he's been like this all season long where the team's just like... They're just better against Ty J. He really doesn't have that that get up to him. That that same uh, that same get up that Jalen Reynolds has displayed here today. He doesn't have that same element, you know, and uh, really takes away from how how good he could be against the defense. We'll get Reynolds in space, try to get a few yards up with him. He does a good job getting up field, and we'll just go back to Reynolds this time, just on the ground and just in general. He's gonna be tackled behind the line once again. You might call me stupid here, but we can make it a six point game, and uh, even at that. Reynolds up the field has space and the first down 30 rushes 181 yards and a touchdown Reynolds has been lights out here today as I'll take Tajay Spears to go to the left side here McLeod will be out in front of him we'll see what uh, Spears can get going here on the ground nothing like I said no giddy up I like Hopkins here he has like a good like one-on-one -on -one opportunity never really took advantage of it though and we'll have to throw this one away it's third and ten Jalen Reynolds the um the stud of today the running back when we don't even run with him or anything with him he will exit the game at possibly the worst time possible uh, if you were looking for him to be good um don't anymore as he is not worthless to us but we've seen we've seen better in the past as um we'll take this one to the end of the quarter and make our decision and we'll just try to kick this field goal we have the wind we have the direction we have the accuracy all with us here and we'll just go up 16 to i believe 10 make it a uh, two field goal game and if they get a touchdown they can take the lead but all we have to do is go down and score a touchdown or go down and score a field goal now but huge news out for the rest of the game jalen reynolds ty j spears will have to come in and take his place and see an extended role from uh antonio gibson the former memphis uh running back <laughs> i don't know why i hesitated first and ten we're just gonna stack that lineup and then Look to make something happen as McCreary is going to go for that conservative sort of angle, but we're going to keep Odell in bounds, and uh, he's good for a few yards. First and 10. This one is a run to uh, Damian Pierce, but he gets stuck on his own man. Doesn't matter. He'll be propelled forward by his own man. Forwards for four. Second and six. We're bringing the heat in, and of course they knew it, and we're going to have to get... Oh, wow. What a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Imani Hooker. He was about to take the wrong <laughs> little uh, angle there. I don't know if you guys caught that until I used it and got onto him. That's why you get onto him and user. He will fuck that up 10 times out of 10 if the CPU gives him the opportunity to shit on the bed or shit the bed with that one there. And this one just underneath trying to break that one up. They're going to call this fourth and inches. Now, this is the play calling that may just hurt them. If they go for this and they don't get it, that would be huge. As we're going to try to literally bring every resource we have down. This one could... Uh, no! Oh my god. Yep, and it's going to be a touchdown instead. You want to know why? Dude, you want to know the bull crap that happened we shot the gap we had it wide with levante david until we got some bullshit shoulder bump headed into the obstructing the line here so look levante david's clearly shooting like dude and then what what does he get bumped on right there you're saying he got bumped on his teammate maybe his shoe 
Something happened. Nope, not even his shoe. And he's going to get bumped and he's not going to be able to make that play. Please. Bitch, please. Like I said, it's important we keep composure here. And this one, it is going to be composure that's going to win this. Or not win this game. We aren't done with it yet. Christian Fulton, maybe getting a little too far ahead of myself. Christian Fulton, though, amazing interception. Love to see that. Ty J, like we mentioned, is going to be in for the rest of the game. And God damn it, dude. You don't call run plays when you want to run the ball. You call pass plays and then call run plays off the pass play. That's how stupid this freaking pathetic ass game is dude we'll have to do the same thing with antonio gibson i'm sure they will still be uh bringing the house as antonio gibson gets a little help going left trying to chew as much clock off the the time as we can and this will be the play here i don't know what we're really going for but can we get this one under pressure of course the fuck not why would the cpu let me have any grace in this game and we'll play down here first and 10 on the 46 this one's going to be a screen play joseph klein back there immediately but instead no one can get off a block no one could do anything hopefully we have something coming back here they're still going to call roughing the passer. That's going to tack on an additional 97 yards. Why don't you just bend me over right now? Yep, I'm over it. I'm over it. We've gotten screwed too many times here by the CPU this season, man. To be, to be here right now um, is all I can ask for. To be in a lead this late in the game is good enough for me right now to know that the game is changing. We're, we got some momentum headed our way. Even if we don't win this one, I'm, I'm okay with that. We made it steps forward today. We kept composure. We kept it on the ground. We kept a good job. This one in the end zone just going to be picked off. CJ Stroud, you are not smart. You do not challenge one of the league leaders in interceptions on a jump ball, even if it is Mike Williams. And this one, Antonio Gibson. I don't know what happens to our defensive line, but whenever we need to actually run the ball and cut some clock off the time or cut some time off the clock, dude, watch what happens. So this, this looks good. Instead, our best lineman peter skaronsky will fold so far to the right which he's told not to and then right here you actually have this leverage peter skaronsky can absolutely post up greg Gaines if he moves up instead of moving so far right he moves upwards and then to the right instead of down to the right it can make so much happen and then diaz to come pick that one up look at diaz over here come pick that up and kyle phillips isn't actually just such a bum that's an amazing play but unfortunately this game does not function on a proper level to the point of exceeding at a realistic you know measure if you will and we'll be like rolling out just have to throw this one away we have no open options anywhere they know exactly the play they know exact the routes it's fucking bullshit. Call the screen. Now I'm calling a run. And this one, Antonio Gibson, get no protection up the field. Sick, man. Sick. It's so dumb. And the Texans are probably going to have no problem going the length of, length of the field in just four minutes and score a touchdown to win this game. I guarantee you there will not be a single issue with that other than Harold Landry getting into the backfield. His second sack, his third sack in two weeks. He's even working on one of the better uh, tackles in football right now with, oh my God, could you imagine getting steamrolled like that from Jeffrey Simmons? Good coverage on us so far, and hopefully it doesn't continue, or hopefully it does continue. And of course, Mechie will somehow make it fourth and manageable. <laughs> That's so annoying, man. They're going to punt? You're not going to punt this. This is a fucking fake. Don't touch the football. Don't. Oh, my God. Probably the worst call in NFL history is that punt right there. That is insane that you're even considering punting that. Gibson goes down, take this one to the two minute warning. Second and eight, two clock is enabled and on. We'll give Tajay Spears the go ahead there. Third and seven, I see why they punted now because we literally suck. We can't get a single thing generated here on the offensive side of the ball except the fact that we cannot find an open, a wide open, in fact. Um, DeAndre Hopkins down the side of the field. I'm not even mad because I expected it at this point. It, it just is going to happen. And if I throw it too fast, it's going to be like, oh, you're trying to do stuff too fast. So I'm just going to throw this one 10 yards out of bounds. 149 without skipping a beat. They are down on the 14 yard line and they'll try to make something happen as long as we can keep them in bounds and keep this thing going. I'm sure we won't be fine but i'm sure that i'll be able to handle it at the end of the day i think that it would just be a little bit more manageable that way so we're gonna try to stop oh my freaking god you gotta be joking i just happen to be there all right i'm not gonna take any credit for that i took isaiah bugs and he made the freaking play of the century in the backfield you gotta be shitting me right now um is this the only conditions we can ever win a football game 
in uh, in Titans franchise. It feels like it at this point. We'll get a fake little jet sweep going and try to get up the field with Ty J Spears, who's good for a few extra yards there. And uh, HB dive on third and three, pretty much to seal and end the game. And dude, what in the world is... I think that's Peter Skaronski trying to literally sell this game as hard as he can. It doesn't matter what he does to do it. <laughs> he has two objectives, Van Noy and Brooks, and he doesn't block either of them and just lets uh, Tajay eat, um, you know, virtual blocks or I guess virtual players and tackles and whatnot. But this game is officially freaking over and we'll be able to propel to our second win of the season and quite the w final 10 to 16 we did our job today malik willis managed the game as best he could so malik willis had an okay game obviously probably his best completion percentage he's ever finished a game with 8 of 17 a touchdown and most importantly no interceptions and then we move to the titans here where jalen reynolds who dislocated his shoulder at the end of this one goes 30 attempts 181 yards six on average a touchdown on the ground ty j finishes this 2.5 and antonio gibson struggled to get the ball rolling but that's really when they expected the run like very very much and then receiving reynolds two catches 11 yards and a touchdown five and a half per care or five and a half per reception deandre hopkins was the safest receiver today going two for 23 Antonio Gibson got a little involved. Chigakonkwa before he got hurt and probably will miss quite a bit of time with some, uh, you know, collarbone issues now. Uh, Kyle Phillips just, I mean, he keeps finding his way into playtime and he plays really well with it anyway, so let it fly. Um, other than that, Jalen Reynolds. What a day. What a way to cap off the day, especially with our defense. Joseph Klein will not lead our team in tackles, but I think he led the team in solo tackles with six. Uh, it'll be Imani Hooker up there with nine and Joseph Klein with eight. Three for loss, two sacks. Oh my God, wait a minute. Joseph Klein had a very, very, very good day to day along with Harold Landry who had two TFLs, or I guess three tackles, two of them for loss and two sacks. So two players with two sacks and uh, those will be the only sacks on the day, but interceptions to go around. Isaiah Bugs, that we saw that one at the end of the game. Um, Shaq Griffin had his and Christian Fulton also had one and he was really good today with uh, six tackles, making six by him, or three by himself. And uh, that will be that pretty much. I mean, you can look through all the, the, the halves and all the, the quarters of play and we just came out better. 16 to 10, finishing this one up. I didn't get it done to the A coach, to be honest. Yeah, you broke your collarbone, dude. Let up a little bit. Two new injuries added to the injury report. Okonkwo and Jalen Duncan, who Duncan, actually, I think he played well until the fact that he broke his collarbone, but he played well. So it's going to be a bummer to see him miss time when he possibly had an opportunity to become quite the guy his second year out of Maryland. And now Chigakonkwo, I think. Where Chiga? Was he a Maryland guy? Was he? Yeah, in Maryland. So Chigakonkwo and Jalen Duncan. Duncan, similar injuries, similar colleges going to the same one and same injury. So I don't know. There's uh, some some teammate chemistry going on there with the uh, the broken collarbones, maybe sympathy pains and uh, a sympathy break, if you will. We'll look at the results of a rainy game. Seemed obviously or seemed obvious given the conditions that the running game would play a huge role in who won. Who do you credit most? Definitely the running backs. Offensive line were horrible by the end of that one. And good to see Jalen Reynolds, by the way, wasn't on that injury report and he won't be. Um, you know missing any time and that is probably the biggest takeaway from all this and we will go ahead and advance the week and look for more trade offers on deandre hopkins maybe a breakout challenge breakout running back for our um our running back and um how is the jacksonville jaguars against the run they are horrible against the run they are last in the league against the run and that might just be a jalen reynolds breakout which would be really insane considering i don't even think we know his dev trait yet unless i got revealed in just this past week and it didn't so i don't know how that'll all work we'll review um offers again here from deandre hopkins trade and there is just one new trade it is dj reed so this will draw out until the uh, or drag out until the trade deadline if i had to guess maybe week six or seven maybe see this resolved by the end of two episodes from now in the whole uh deandre hopkins ordeal i still want to you know decide whether or not we get rid of him because it wouldn't be tanking but it would definitely be be like tanking um and just taking the uh the better situation and whatnot so crisis in confidence your receiver wants to talk to his talk to me about his lack of maybe it's deandre hopkins maybe he'll complain enough to make me trade his dumbass 
other than that pretty much same old same old might make a, a change or two headed into the next game but that'll be all for me thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed go down consider leaving a like go down subscribe consider going back and watching any content related to this youtube channel on this youtube channel and uh, i guarantee you you will enjoy it that'll be all for me thank you guys for watching deuces